Hey, it's Lucy. I am a Doctor of Planetary Science from the University of Oxford. I'm a nuclear chemist working at a national lab here in the UK, and I'm the author of the science fiction Pluto Shine, which is being published by Golands of Orion, and which I sold as a two-book deal during my PhD. I wrote Pluto Shine as a short story, I left it for a year, and then I came back to it and thought, oh hey, I should write this into a novel. So I wrote it into a novel. Just like that, because I certainly wasn't doing a 60 hour a week PhD, or running this channel, or having hobbies or relationships, and I certainly didn't have a life. Actually, that last one might be true. No one has time to write a novel, and nobody has the inspiration where every word will just fly from your fingertips, and nobody thinks every word is gold and that they're guaranteed to actually get something out of it when they even finish. It never stops being hard, every step of the way, and that is why it is worthwhile. Maybe you're watching this because you want to write a novel, but you already have a mad packed to the gills, hectic, wonderful life, but I think you can do it. You can make writing part of your already mad, hectic, packed to the gills, wonderful life, because I did, and this video is about how. What I'm going to do is go through that process from the very first spark to being in ship shape. I'm not going to cover publishing agents, etc. in this video, I'll do that in a separate video, because when I got to the point that I was happy with my novel, I was so proud of myself, and it was an accomplishment in itself, and I want you to think that too. I'll be brief, I'll be succinct, and I really hope I'll be helpful. This is how I would entrust my younger self to get it done again. So let's start with the starting out, the thing from which this all springs, and that is the spark. A little girl mute from trauma searches for life on her homeworld of Pluto in the hope she can piece her family back together. An engineer's plans to warn Pluto go astray between a saboteur and a local girl who is searching for native life. The head of a base on Pluto works to keep his traumatised sister wholly mute, and an engineer tasked with warming Pluto's climate discovers more than he bargained for as he seeks to understand why. This is coming up with a premise, a hook, a heart, really. So my New Year's resolution of 2017 was to enter creative writing competitions, because there were little prompts, there were deadlines, there was the minor, minor, minor chance of a reward. Pluto Shine was the third one I wrote, after the one about the cat and the magpie who team up to steal milk bottles, which I definitely need to write as a novel. The original was 5,000 words, and I wrote it in a couple of weekends, didn't win anything. Um, and I realised after a couple of months I was still thinking about those characters and I still wanted to know more. That's a rare feeling that I think you should chase after. But it's not enough to have an idea that you love, you are really busy. I may have come up with the premise for Pluto Shine in 2017, but it was a whole year before I took myself up on that thought of expanding it, and that's because I hadn't yet chosen to make time. Make is the key word here, because you don't find the time to write a novel. I say I'd love to learn the piano, but I've never ever once tried to make an actual attempt at doing so, so do I really want to or is it just something that would be really cool? You want to write a novel, you need to make dedicated time to do it. I started getting up each day at 5.30 once I realised I was coming home from the lab each day, too tired to be neither use nor ornament, and so I shifted my day around so that I had my free time before I began work. At first I read books, I chain drank tea, I slowly became accustomed to just getting up at that time and it became my new normal. And then I realised the idea I had, the Pluto idea, the one about the little girl who can't speak, and the engineer who makes her feel lovable again, I had the time to write it. Don't immediately write yourself off as not a morning person if this idea sounds just horrible, because I diaried the very first week that I did it, and it is really hard. But after a while it just starts to become normal. I would write solidly for an hour or two most mornings, I would keep the internet off on my computer, and then I would get home from work and maybe write for another couple of hours, and usually for one or sometimes both days of a weekend as well, because it's supposed to be fun, you're supposed to want to. I remember a couple of times staying in on a Friday night and well, getting to write after a long week felt like the biggest treat, there was nowhere I'd have rather been. You see what I mean when I said I didn't have a life? The singularity of what I'm saying is that you have to make time for yourself, whenever that time is. The point is that you find when you are at your most energised, and then you have to get disciplined. You've got your hook, you've got your time, and now it's time to get into a routine. 400 words a day, every day. On a dreamlike rarity of a day, that is under half an hour, the words flying from your fingertips. On a slow, sluggish, uninspired grey Wednesday when you're halfway through and you've just realised how often your characters shrug 
why are they always shrugging? And you hate the way this scene has turned out. Why is she acting so whiny? And why is he acting so mean? That could be your two hours before breakfast and then back at it after tea and you're still not there. I wasn't too hard on myself if I just couldn't make it some days because you can bet you're really going to go over that on some days. So let's think of it another way. 400 words a day is 3,000 words a week. 3,000 words a week is over 10,000 words a month. That's a novel in under a year. So how about 10,000 words a month? And that's exactly what I did. Every month I reach 10,000 words, even if some months that really was 9pm on the 31st, and other months it was the week before and I hadn't even realised. I can't understand for the life of me how people make 50,000 words during National Novel Writing Month, that's unfathomable to me. I'd say don't make yourself miserable if you're just really having a bad day. There'd be some days I'd write for like an hour and think this is really all I can spare today. And I think that's okay, just so long as you make sure you persevere. You will get stuck at some point and you will hate it. So there's this one line in my book where every time I read it I smile because I was so stuck on that line and I spent a whole weekend walking laps around the park and thinking this is it, this is when I realise I can't write a novel. Go home. Nice while it lasted. Did you ever really think you could write a novel? Oh shush, giving up is so easy. There are times when you're going to hate it. You'll hate your characters. Why is Professor Halley getting emotional here when she is hard as nails? You'll hate your plot. Why would a child be out exploring Pluto on her own? That's just unrealistic. You'll hate your style of writing. Did I really just use the word alien to describe the surface of an asteroid? I really think this is where routine becomes most important because once you get past that really difficult scene or you rediscover your protagonist's voice again, then you'll have something to work with. You haven't lost that time, and even if what you were writing you didn't enjoy doesn't mean it's no good. We're getting on for the end of your first draft now, and I really hope you love writing your last line. I really hope it gives you a genuine thrill, and I really hope that you know it's your last line as you're writing it, because your readers will too. The edit is next. The read-through. The how am I at 120,000 words. The man, you can tell I got in the swing of things because now my first chapters read really clunkily. The edit phase can be pleasurable and or painful in that it's kind of satisfyingly destructive and it's a bit ripping out and it's a bit slash and burn, but at the same time it's going to hurt and you're going to lose things you really didn't want to. But what I like about this phase is that you kind of get a feel for what needs to go. Ah, uh, you'll think I really love this scene, I love what my characters are doing, I love my word choices, but it's not really moving the story along and if it can go it probably should. It's hard but don't be sentimental. In my edit phase I lost whole characters. Two got combined into one. I lost whole perspectives. Just didn't need that many voices. There's this character I love called Hallie. She's a terrifying professor who carves up planets and I loved being in her head but it didn't add anything to the story and so it had to go. I got people I trusted to have a read at this stage. I'm a very 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 private person and so I loved writing a novel in secret. I loved working on this intensely precious project that nobody else knew that I was working on and breaking that secrecy up into tiny pieces and giving it to people was one of the most vulnerable feelings I've ever felt. It felt a bit like handing people my diary and saying have at it. Find me all the inconsistencies, find me all the bits I'm most sensitive about, and then tell me why they're slow-paced, riddled with holes, tell me why they're unimaginative. Because if you don't, then nobody will. Tell me so I can make this better. Let yourself be flayed raw. Listen. The best advice I ever heard at this stage is if two people say something independently, you should probably listen. And if someone says something that you kind of already knew, you should definitely listen. Pretty much everyone who read the first draft of Plutoshine found one character really weak and annoying, so she had to go. Most people got confused at this final boss battle scene that kind of took place in somebody's head. I loved it, but it had to go. Most people loved my main character, this traumatized ten-year-old called Nu who doesn't understand why her brother doesn't love her anymore. Absolutely everyone loved my sarcastic professor Hallie. I love Hallie. I would follow Hallie to the end of the universe. And one person asked if Lucian the engineer was single. <laughs> It'll feel leaner, smoother, focused. You're trying to say something and now you're saying it a little bit better. It's really kind of people to help you out so make sure they know that. And now you have a novel. Writing Pluto Shine was exhausting and every day I was confronting the reality of the fact that after dreaming of one day being a published author my whole life, I might just not be good enough. If I hadn't written Pluto Shine, I would still be thinking that. This is my novel, this is how I wrote it, and maybe this is how you can write yours too. Remember, find the spark, 
make the time, get disciplined, persevere, and edit, edit, edit. And love what you're writing. Because if you don't, how can you expect anyone else to? If you would like to meet New the 10 year old, or Hallie the terrifying professor, or Lucian the apparently attractive engineer, or if you'd like to know how it feels to run on Pluto, or to jump off mountains on Pluto, or what colour the sky is on Pluto, then you can find links to Pluto Shine in the box thing below, and I really hope that you love reading it as much as I loved writing it. Thank you for watching. My name is Lucy Kizik, I'm a nuclear scientist, I have a PhD in planetary science, and I'm a science fiction author, and take care.